This evening I was due to take part in a debate in the Parliament about the hybrid proceedings uh, that we're currently adopting. Uh, unfortunately the debate ran out of time so I thought I would record this wee short message just to kind of outline the points I wanted to make. I was particularly <laughs> disturbed uh, by comments made by one of the members, uh, Charles Walker, who su seemed to suggest that members north of the border sitting in our houses were not actively taking part in parliamentary proceedings. This couldn't be further from the truth. I know that I and every member of the parliament who's a, a representing a Scottish constituency across every political party is working incredibly hard. In fact, possibly even more so than we could ever do down in Westminster if we were there in a physical sense because the ability to be at home and taking part in the parliament virtually has meant that, I know certainly for me, I've been able to participate with a number of community groups who I wouldn't have been able to do so if I was actually down in London. The current setup in the Parliament just now as well means that only 50 members can actually attend Parliament at any one time. There's only space for 50 to be accommodated in the Chamber safely uh, if we're going to keep to social distancing, and that's 50 out of 650. So if those who are actively encouraging a, a full return to Parliament are, are to be heard, then you have a significant number of members turning up in Parliament but unable to attend the Chamber to participate. And I would suggest that that actually reduces the opportunity for us to ask questions and hold the government to account. The, the system we're using is undoubtedly not the same as a physical setup would be in the Parliament, but that doesn't mean it's the worst thing in the world. And certainly the, the Leader of the House uh, certainly seemed to be suggesting that we should all essentially risk our health so that we can go back and make interventions in each other. And which, yes, that absolutely makes for better debate, but given that we're in the situation we are, and that as far as I'm aware, certainly, the advice, even in England, is still that if you are able to work from home, you should work from home, then I think that's absolutely reasonable that members of Parliament from Scotland and elsewhere in, in the UK should continue to do that because we are able to participate, we are able to ask questions and we are able to take part in debates. It's not the full range of things that we could normally do in Parliament, but nobody's able to do the full range of things that they would do in reality. So looking forward, I would like to see some of the measures that have been put in place over this period extended. I'd like to see the continuation of the digital voting, I mean, the fact that it, we used to have to stand in queue in, in voting lobbies for 15 minutes at a time to have our name checked by a, a clerk, whereas now we can actually securely uh, do this online uh, would mean that there would be opportunity for a greater number of divisions if this was actually worked through uh, in a sensible way to the extent that often if you're having a bill and there's multiple amendments being considered, the number that we can actually vote on are, are severely limited. If we were to apply digital electronic voting and to work through a, a fuller system of doing that, we'd be able to consider far more, um, far more votes, uh, far more amendments as we went. But beyond all of that, I think that the, the key point in all of this is that whatever we do and whatever changes are made in the way Parliament works, we always have to think about the safety, principally of the House staff. I mean, there are hundreds, thousands probably, uh, staff members who have been working tirelessly to make sure that the system of the hybrid Parliament has been able to operate, who continue to make that work for us and who have gone out of their way to make sure that the MPs are still able to do our jobs. And if we all descend back into Parliament, there needs to be a significant increase in those staff, most of whom will have to travel on public transport, I would have thought largely, uh, sometimes very large distances to attend work. And that's not yet safe. We need to be looking out for the safety of all of the people in the House of Commons. And us as members, if we're attending, I mean... What's to say if there wasn't to be another outbreak? We've already seen the Prime Minister um, being diagnosed and having to be hospitalised. What happens if there's another outbreak and members of Parliament have all been in attendance? Do we then have to isolate and are not able to support our communities? So there's a number of issues like this that we still need to look at very closely. And I'm, I am concerned that the Leader of the House seemed to be outlining that there was only going to be this extension to the 20th of May on the current hybrid proceedings. That, to me, doesn't give enough time for us to make sure that it is safe for us all to go back to Parliament. 
And just because we're not there, to reinforce the point, just because we're not physically in the parliament does not mean we are not working hard. We are. Every one of us are. So that is a brief summary of the points I was looking to make. So if you've got any questions, uh, if you've got any points you want to make in that, I realise that the procedure of the Commons isn't maybe the thing at the top of everybody's list, but I thought it was important to outline uh, the concerns I have if there is this rush by some members on Tory benches to, to press gang uh, other members back into a, a physical parliament.